Good morning. Uh, this is your fourth lecture of RFIC design. So we were discussing about the uh, non the two major issues in RFIC design. One is non-linearity and the second one is noise. So uh, we were discussing non-linearity in this unit and uh, we have seen different non-linearities starting from uh, harmonics. We have seen the effect of harmonics. Then uh, the parameter or the performance measure is to uh, measure harmonic distortion. Uh, but in most of the cases, uh, when we uh, design narrow band RF circuits, harmonics are not really a problem. But we, uh, we should definitely uh, analyze harmonics before we dismiss the harmonic components. So after that, uh, we have seen a phenomena called gain compression. Uh, as your input voltage increases, for a linear system, output voltage should increase proportionally. But uh, we know that the devices what we use uh, in RF circuits are non-linear or the system itself is non-linear. So we cannot uh, expect a proportional increase to the output when you increase the input voltage or your output will eventually compress. So the, uh, the compression, yeah, we define compression depending on the coefficient alpha 3. Uh, even if there is a positive alpha 3 coefficient, finally your uh, uh, output voltage should compress because of the power supply limits. So uh, in order to understand this gain compression, the, the performance metric is defined that we call as 1 dB compression point, which is under root of 0.145 alpha 1 by alpha 3, right. So after that, uh, we have seen uh, another uh, non-linearity, effect of non-linearity that is desensitization or blocking where you have a desired signal and we considered a single interferer accompanying a desired signal. So whenever an interferer is accompanying a desired uh, signal, uh, we observed that uh, for, a, for the case of alpha 3 negative, uh, gain is becoming a decreasing function of the amplitude of your interferer or at some amplitude of the interferer signal, the entire gain of the system can be reduced to zero. In that case, the entire system will be desensitized. That is one effect of the blocking signal whenever it is accompanying along with the desired signal. And now why we are considering this blocking signal along with the desired signal is because whenever a receiver receives a signal, it will not be able to receive a single uh, channel, it will be receiving a band. So it will use a set of filters to finally uh, take out the channel or the desired signal from that. So whenever uh, a band is selected, there will be in band interferers or in even some some cases we will be receiving a uh, receiving a larger band where we have out of band interferers which is out of the particular band of interest so that is desensitization uh, after that we have seen one more phenomena which is called cross modulation uh, that is uh, that is basically when a signal is accompanied by an interferer and when that interferer is modulated the modulation will be transferred from the interferer signal to the uh, desired signal, right. So these are the things what we have seen before uh, in the previous classes. So uh, when you have a single signal, you have the phenomena of uh, harmonic distortion. Whenever you have a single signal and one interferer, desensitization happens. Now we'll see the uh, one last effect of nonlinearity, where we consider two strong interferers or two large interferers accompanying a desired signal. So whenever two interferers are accompanying a desired signal, what will happen? Or whether these interferers will affect the desired signal or not, right? So that phenomena is known as intermodulation. So let us see what is this intermodulation first. So this is the fifth effect. So when I say intermodulation, uh, it is basically uh, two interferers, two interferers accompanying a desired signal. So now we have desired signal and there are two more interferers, right. So analyzing mathematically these three signals will be really difficult. But we already analyzed what happens when two signals are mixed up, right. So can you tell me what are the different products coming up when two signals are mixed or when there, when there are two signals uh, and when its sum is uh, raised to a power greater than unity. 
say you have a cos omega a1 cos omega 1t and a2 cos omega 2t the when its sum is uh, raised to a power greater than unity can i expect some non linear components yeah so i'll what i'm uh, about to discuss is what we discussed in the first day so whenever we have two signals so why i am considering only two signals is i want to see whether there are, when there are two interference accompanying a signal whether these two signals affects my desired signal or not right so i will consider the non linearity by con uh, i will consider these two signals and i'll check the non linearity i'll check all the products which are coming from this interference and we'll check whether it is affecting the desired signal or not okay yeah so when two signals of different frequencies when two signals of different frequencies are applied to a nonlinear system so the output will exhibit a lot of frequency components so how to exhibit frequency components other than the harmonics so this uh, phenomena is called or this uh, process is called intermodulation this is called intermodulation so and these products are known as intermodulation products so basically these products arises from mixing of uh, two different signal frequencies mixing is basically multiplication is raised to a power greater than unity whenever two signals of different frequencies are mixed together so when i say mixed together when that sum passes through a nonlinear system that sum can be raised to a power of square cube or any term depending on the extent of nonlinearity of that particular block so say i'll uh, consider x of t as a1 cos omega 1t plus a2 cos omega 2t and i'll assume that the system is non linear with dc term of alpha 1 alpha not fundamental term of uh, alpha 1 plus x into x of t plus alpha 2 x square t plus alpha 3 x cube t so characterizing the non linearity up to third order now when we discuss this uh, non linearity in the first class we have written many products in that harmonics we already discussed right now apart from harmonics what are the other products we have Uh, we have sum and uh, we have uh, omega one plus or minus omega two, two omega one plus or minus omega two. Such products are there. So now we will analyze that because that is what I defined here. When two different signal frequencies are raised to a, uh, when their sum is raised to a power greater than unity, we are getting certain products. So let us analyze those products. Those products are, if you remember, those products are coming from the multiplication uh, terms. So they are multiplication terms. or we call it as intermodulation terms maybe we'll have a look at that 
uh, yeah, these are the terms. Omega one plus or minus omega two, uh, two omega one plus or minus omega two. So I will uh, write those terms here. Omega one plus or minus omega two. So the term will be alpha two a one a two cos omega one plus omega two into t plus alpha two a one a two cos omega one minus omega two into t. This is a one product. Then you have other terms uh, one at two omega one plus or minus omega two. So that is three by four alpha three a one square a two cos two omega one plus omega two into t plus the same three by four alpha three a one square a two cos two omega one minus omega two into t. And the last product is when when we consider third order nonlinear, the last product is two omega two plus or minus omega one. That is again three by four alpha three a two square a one cos two omega two plus omega one into t plus three three by four alpha three a two square a one cos two omega two minus omega one. So in general, so you have say p omega one plus or minus q omega two terms, and to identify the intermodulation order, your intermodulation order is. P plus when you when you have a term p omega one plus or minus q omega two, your intermodulation order is p plus q. So in that case, what is the intermodulation order of this two second order? Because you have p and q both are one, so I will call this as I M two term intermodulation of second order second order intermodulation term. Similarly, this is I M three products. These two are I M three products. So you have P and Q both one in this case. Here P equals two and Q equals one. Is it clear? Right now we'll see how this affects uh, our desired signal. Say you have a signal. Uh, so whatever we discuss now uh, is represented over here. You have two signals. Uh, in this case, your a one is equal to a two is equal to a at two different frequencies omega one and omega two. When it is passed through a nonlinear system, you are getting many components. So these are the desired components omega one and omega two. Right. Uh, apart from that, you have harmonics that is not considered here, but you have intermodulation terms I M three, which is very close to the uh, fundamental components. So these are the I M three terms I M three. Then you have I M two terms here. So comparatively, uh, so which is which will affect I M three will I M three terms usually affect uh, when I look at this. Right. So now, uh, when two interferers are maybe when two signals are passed through a nonlinear system, we are getting all these products. Now, assume a case when you have a desired signal because we are not studying about interferers. Our interest is uh, at a desired signal. Say you have a desired signal at omega naught, and the receiver is receiving a band where you have two interferers accompanying the desired signal. Right. Now, where will be the location of this of this desired signal next to omega one? So your desired signal is supposed to be somewhere here. But what happens when it passes through the nonlinear system? Yeah, the I M three products are right 
falling on this desired signal band. So if I, if I have a band here, definitely your IN3 products are coming inside this band. Now what happens if IN3, IN3 products fall on the desired signal? Yeah, uh, my, uh, the desired signal will be corrupted. The corruption of desired signal will happen. Right. Yes or no? So when you have two interferers accompanying a desired signal, as a part of non-linearity, uh, you will get many products, but the products which are closer to the fundamental component, when I say fundamental component, the products which are closer to the desired signal is actually uh, your 2 omega 2, 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 component, which is your IM3 product. So, if your IM3 product is falling on the desired signal, your desired signal will be corrupted. So, demodulating or like processing your desired signal will be difficult. Right. So, since this happens, we need to have a performance metric to measure the corruption of the desired signal or to identify uh, how much your desired signal is corrupted by your IM3 product. So, we need to uh, get a performance measure for that. So, to characterize this, So to characterize the effect of IM3 products, we define another performance metric like 1 dB compression point or harmonic distortion. That uh, performance metric is called as third intercept point. Or it is uh, denoted as IP3, where this third comes from the uh, IM3 term, so because these IM, 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 is a third order intermodulation product and this intercept uh, word comes from the method how we are extracting this IP3 term. So, we will see how uh, we can do that. So, this IP3 is similar to harmonic distortion or A1DB. When I say similar, these are different performance metric which we use uh, to study this non-linearities. Right. So, let us see how to uh, study this third intercept, how to get an expression for this third intercept point. So, again uh, we will consider the previous two tone test signals, but here we are considering the amplitude of both signals as same A. Now, if you have a desired signal, what will be the amplitude of desired signal at the output? If A is the amplitude of the desired signal, what will be the output, output amplitude? Again into A, uh, which is alpha 1 into A. Right. Now, what will be the IM3 component at the output? IM3 component at the output. Yeah, 3 by 4 alpha 3 a cube if you have a1 is equal to a2. So, we are interested at the amplitude of these two terms. Why? Because desired signal IM3 component is the term which is actually corrupting the desired signal. So, this IP3 is defined as, so this is my input amplitude. And this is the output amplitude. Now, if you draw the desired signal, alpha 1a can be plotted something like this, alpha 1a. So, this will be your alpha 1a term. Now, how will be your third order term looks like? It is 3 by 4 alpha 3a cube. Yeah, it will be uh, something like this. Right. Now, this IP3 uh, performance metric, your IP3 point is defined at
So this is defined as right three point. So what is the right three point? The amplitude of fundamental equals to the amplitude of i n three product. So at that point, what happens? The desired signal is fully corrupted, and that is taken as a performance metric. So here I'll mark this as amplitude a i t three. In uh, one another way is if I so this is actually the input amplitude, right? So I define this as i i p three. That is i p three point at the input. Similarly, I can define even here that is o i p i p three point at the output. So most of the cases we define i p three at the input. So this term is. Three by four alpha three eq. So how to get a uh, expression for this? Ah, both are equal. When both are equal, your a is a i p three, right? So can you get an expression for that? <coughs> yeah. So to to get an expression, yeah, I'll write in this way. Magnitude of alpha one into a, but I'll write a as Alpha one into a is equal equal to magnitude of three by four alpha three a q. But when these two are equal, your a is a i p three. So I'll mark this as i p three. Even here also i p. So that will give you a i p three value as under root of four by three alpha one by alpha three. Right. So now, can you get a relation between uh, one dB compression point and third intercept point? Yeah. So here you can see that these are the two interferers, and you have a desired signal, and your IN3 term is actually falling inside the desired signal. When your IN3 amplitude reaches your output signal amplitude, the entire signal is corrupted. So that is a uh, idea, or that is what AIP3 performance metric is giving you. So depending on the AIP3 value, you can see actually your output is fully corrupted, or up to what percentage your output is corrupted. Right. So can you get a relation between 1 dB compression point and AIP3 point? Yeah, A1 dB is equal to. Okay. So if I write a i p three divided by a one d b, what will be the value? A i p three by a one d b. I t b three point zero three two. So a i p three by a one d b is three point zero three two. So these are the amplitude values, right? A I P three and A one D B are the amplitude values. Now, uh, if I am expressing this in D B M, how can I express this? So I will uh, write A I P three in D B M is often called as I I P three in D B M. See, uh, A I P three A represents the amplitude. When we are expressing in terms of power, the notation is I I P three. In dBm, right? So that will be equal to a1 dB is the 1 dB compression point when we express in terms of volt. Now, when I express that in uh, dBm, I will call it as p1 dB. Just to express that it is the power level. So p1 dB again in dBm. So what will be the relation? Now uh, plus. So how many dBs? Nine point six three. This comes again from the first discussion, right? The difference between two dBm levels will be dB.
So the difference between your IAP3 point and 1 dB compression point is 9.6. And you can see that uh, your IAP3 point is actually at the higher power level. So what is 1 dB compression point? Where your gain falls 1 dB from the uh, normal, like your, uh, your ideal, ideal scale. And your IAP3 is 9 point, almost 10 dB higher than your uh, 1 dB compression point. So, uh, we look at this particular question. So, the question given is uh, Bluetooth receiver which employs an LNA and the gain of LNA is 10. So, if I represent LNA in this way, so this LNA is receiving a signal. Now the gain of this LNA is 10, that means it is 10 B bar V. So what, how much is in dB? 10, 20 dB. So the gain of this LNA is 20 dB. Now this LNA is sensing, so what are the signals at the input? There is a desired signal whose level is given as minus 80 dBm that is a desired signal uh, and that the frequency of the desired signal is 2.410 so maybe this axis is megahertz now along with that there are two uh, <coughs> interferers of equal levels so those interferers are equal levels but we don't know the, um, the level of the interferer so I am assuming interferers at a higher level 0.420 and this is 2.430. These levels are not known as of now. Question is determine the value of alpha 3 that yields a 1 dB compression point of minus 30 dB. So the expressions what we know is 1 is 1 dB compression point in volts. What is the value? A root of 1, uh, 0.145 into alpha 1 by alpha 3 and another one is AIP3 which is under root of 4 by 3 alpha 1 by alpha 3 right so uh, if, if you know 1 dB compression point you can find AIP3 and you can definitely arrive at the value of alpha 3 alpha 3 in the sense it will be like mode alpha 3. right so tell me the value So let's see how to solve this problem. Yeah, so these two relations we know, A1DB and AIP3 relations we know. So one important thing is these two are the values which we get in terms of voltage. Now in the question it is given that P1DB, so there are two parts, anyway we will uh, first look at this part. P1 dB is given as minus 30 dBm. This is the power level. So we have the formula for A1 dB. To use A1 dB formula, first I am getting the power in watts from this. So minus 30 dBm is equal to 10 log. The power referred with respect to 1 milliwatt. Maybe I will write this as, uh, yeah, I will just simply write it as power. So from this what is the power? Now if you do this, you will get this as 1 micro watts of power. Right. So from this 1 micro, so this 1 micro watts of power is basically VRMS square by R value or it is equal to uh, peak to peak or you can write in different terms. This is equal to 1 micro watts. From this you can write the peak value which is amplitude. So what is the peak value? Ten, 10 millivolts. This is amplitude, right. So this is equal to what? This is equal to what? 
ए वन डी बी हाँ दिस इज ए वन डी बी हाँ बोल दी आर डिनोटिंग इट एस ए वन डी बी दैट एस इन मीन दैट ए वन डी बी वैल्यू इज इन डी बी राइट इट इज एम्पलीट्यूड ए वन डी बी इज एम्पलीट्यूड now if you know the a1 db value uh, we have a1 db equal to under root of 0.145 into alpha 1 by alpha 3 so a1 db is known alpha 1 is known so you can find alpha 3 value what is your alpha 3 value 14500 what is the unit Units are V power minus two. So that is the first part of the question. Now let's look at the uh, yeah. Now let's look at the second part. The question is if each interferer is 10 dB below 1 dB compression point. That means what is the level of uh, interferer? Minus 40 dB. So we can write this level. This is minus 40 dBm. So if the interferer level is minus 40 dBm. Determine the corruption experienced by the desired signal at the LNA output. So now at the output, so I'll draw the output uh, spectrum. Output we will get this desired signal. What will be the level of that? A uh, minus 60 dBm. Now these two signal levels, that is the interferer. Again, interferers will be uh, changed by the uh, signal amplitude. But there will be one term coming exactly here because you, you can see here, this is 2.410, 2.420, 2.430. 2 so 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 will fall at 2.410. Right. So if that happens. So, if the IM3 term of these interferers, if it falls on this desired signal, how much is the corruption experience at this particular condition? If your interferers are uh, 10 dB below 1 dB compression bound, or if your interferers are at minus 40 dB, how much is the corruption experienced by the desired signal? Can you try that? Yeah, your second part says that. So from the second part, you will get the interferer amplitude at the input. So what is the in interferer amplitude? Minus 40 dBm. Uh, sorry, interferer power is minus 40 dBm. So what is the? So I'll write interferer amplitude as A I N T. What is the value? You can get the amplitude of interferer from the power level. So what is A I N T? Yeah, you will get it as 3.162 millivolts. So from where will you get this? Uh, this is from minus 40 dBm. If you convert this properly, you will get the amplitude level as uh, 3.162 milli. Now, what we should find here, we should find the amplitude of the output uh, IM3 product. So, output IM3 product amplitude is 3 by 4 alpha 3 A interferer Q. Alpha 3 is known. A interferer is known. When I substitute this, um, I will get this amplitude as Point three four three millivolt peak. Hey, direct substitution will get point three four three millivolt peak, or this is equal to a power level of minus fifty nine point three dBm. So you have the peak value. You find the power and express that in dBm. Then you will get the dBm value as minus fifty nine point three dBm. So what is this power level? Output I M three power level, right? So what is the desired signal power? Minus sixty point uh, minus sixty dBm, and your output interferer that is uh, coming at two omega one minus omega two is almost corrupting your desired signal. Or fifty nine minus fifty nine point three, and the other one is minus sixty. So your corruption is nearly hundred percent each, right? So that is idea. Yeah. So uh, now we'll see uh, one more method to estimate the IP3 value. Mm -hmm. So 
considering the same nonlinear system uh, at the input when I assume uh, two signals of omega 1 and omega 2 with amplitudes uh, yeah both are same amplitude so I will consider this amplitude as a in which is a input amplitude now at the output So I will get the desired signal at omega 1, omega 2. So to identify that I will express this amplitude as A omega 1, omega 2, the output amplitude of the corresponding signals. And uh, we have these two uh, terms which is 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and this is 2 omega 2 minus omega 1. So these amplitudes I will mark it as A i m. The idea is to get another expression uh, to find uh, IP3. Now you can see uh, this is one power level and this is another power level. So the difference of these two power levels I am just marking it as delta P when both are expressed in dBms. So when A omega 1 omega 2 and A im3 when both are in dBms there will be a difference of delta P which is in uh, dB. Right. Now uh, so we defined IP3 as the value when your fundamental component at the output equals the IM3 amplitude, right. So in a similar way, I am expressing the fundamental component amplitude by IM3 component amplitude, both are at the output, both are defined at the output. So how can I write this? What is the expected value of A omega 1 omega 2 at the output? So here I am not considering one is desired or one is uh, uh, interferer. When I have two signal components, I am just looking at the amplitude of the fundamental and the IM3 term. So this remains same when a, uh, when a desired signal comes at that 2 omega 1 minus omega 2. That will be the corruption experienced over there. Now I am considering two signals at the input. Just to uh, write an, another expression for IP3. Now what is the expected output at uh, uh, amplitude of A omega 1 omega 2? Uh, alpha 1 into A and what is the ex uh, uh, expected output of A I am 3? 3 by 4 alpha 3 into the input amplitude the whole thing. So I am just uh, rearranging these terms. So A omega 1 omega 2 by A I am 3 uh, is expressed in this way. So this is 4 by 3 alpha 1 by alpha 3 into 1 by a square. What is this term 4 by 3 alpha 1 by alpha 3? A i p 3 square. So this can be written as a i p 3 square divided by a in square. So, uh, if all these, if all these are amplitudes, I can express this as 20 log A omega 1 omega 2 minus 20 log of A i m 3 equals 20 log of A i p 3 square minus 20 log of A m square or to get an expression for IP3, 20 log of A IP3 can be written as, so I have square terms here, so I am taking half to the other side, so it is 20 log of A omega 1 omega 2 minus 20 log of A I m 3 plus 20 log of Right. So, what is the uh, LHS side? That is the IP3 value. So, RHS the first term is the difference between the yeah the relative difference between the fundamental and the uh, what is this IM3 product. 
half of that plus 20 log a right so the same thing i am expressing in terms of dbm so if we are iap3 if we have in dbm that is equal to your input signal power in dbm plus the difference between the power level at the output half of that in db so here i have written as a uh, relative measure there i express in terms of absolute measure with respect to 1 milliwatts so iap3 in dbm is if you have input signal power in dbm plus the difference of the power level between the output component and the im3 products by 2 will give you ip3 iap3 any doubts so this may be useful uh, for calculations so we'll solve one more problem yeah so what is given is you have an input signal of minus 80 dbm so what is the corresponding uh, voltage level ah uh, what is the corresponding voltage okay so let, let us see let us so i'll uh, i so this should, this should not be an indirect error this is the yeah desired signal yeah so what is the desired signal amplitude 31 point micro this is peak to peak or peak okay so your desired signal amplitude is 31.6 micro volt now what is your interferer level yeah this is minus 20 dbm so what will be the corresponding uh, voltage 31.6 millivolt that is also peak value now <clears throat> what is the question given what iap3 is required if the im products must remain 20 db below the signal right so how can i convert that into an expression your im products the difference between your i uh, between your im products at the output and the desired signal at the output should be 20 db yeah so if i express in terms of uh, 20 log can i write in this way 20 log of alpha 1 into a signal which is the uh, desired signal level at the output minus 20 db should be what Ah, uh, should be your IM three product sample. That is twenty log of ah uh, three by four alpha three and Q. Right. So ah uh, we know A signal, we know A interferer. From this expression, what I can get? Alpha one by alpha three. If I have alpha one by alpha three, I can directly find A I P three. can you try this and get the answer okay so from this uh, if you write you will get the value of alpha 1 by alpha 3 which is equal to 7.489 uh, from that you can find a ip3 value yeah which is 3.16 volt which is a peak value or you can express this in terms of dbm what is a dbm value Yeah, nineteen point nine nine dBm, or it is twenty dB. Now we look at the output uh, spectrum. So at the input, uh, there are at the input there is a desired signal, and there are two interferers. So interferer level is minus twenty dBm, and the desired signal is minus eighty dBm. now this is passed through a nonlinear system and we are interested so these are the interferers 
now we are interested at the desired signal now apart from desired signal at the same frequency we know that an IN3 product also will fall now what is the question your IN3 product uh, should fall actually 20 dB 20 dB lesser so the question is in order to have an IN3 product that should remain 20 dB below the signal what should be your IAP3 so this is a desired signal level and this this uh, this should be your IM3 product level and this difference is mentioned as 20 dB. This is what exactly I have written here. You can see here 20 log of alpha 1 A signal is actually this blue line. Right. At input I have A signal what will be at the output 20 log alpha 1 into A signal. So the blue line is here 20 log alpha 1 into A signal minus 20 dB should be the IM3 product. So, IN3 product is 20 log of 3 by 4 alpha 3 A in Q. So, uh, the both amplitudes are different. A in D is your interferer amplitude and A signal is your desired signal amplitude. And that difference should be 20 for that how much should be your IAP, IAP3 is the question. Now, what happened? Uh, we uh, tried to uh, incorporate that over here. Right. So, what is the problem here? In this uh, diagram, I have considered two signals. So, uh, the signal over here is the fundamental component of the same signal and the IM3 product is also the IM3 product of the same signal. I have not considered a desired signal here. Now the, the question says you have a desired signal and there are two interferers. That is why directly if I apply this formula that is not working out in this particular example. Is that fine? Yeah, so till now we were discussing nonlinear nonlinear uh, nonlinearity uh, by considering one single block but we know that an rf system or typically when you consider a transceiver you have trans transmitter and receiver and uh, there will be many blocks in cascade so we'll just try to understand what happens if there are cascaded stages so what happens uh, like how this nonlinearity uh, can be understood for a cascaded series. Right. So with that we will uh, wind up this. So basically uh, signals in an RF system are processed by cascaded stages. So it is very important to understand nonlinearity and its effects in uh, cascaded states. So again for uh, simplicity we will consider mm, two cascaded stages. So this is one stage and this is another stage. Consider two nonlinear So this is the input x of t, maybe this is the input of the first stage, so I will mark it as y1 of t, this is the input of the second stage, so this is phi2 of t. Now both are nonlinear stages and maybe we look at the ip3 term or we'll try to evaluate the uh, intercept point for this cascade stage. So I'll mark the IAP3 of stage 1 as IAP3 1 and IAP3 of stage 2 as IAP3 2. So uh, this cascade stage, each stage will be having individual IAP3 but for a cascade this IAP3 may vary. So we'll see how the IAP3 uh, will vary when you have a uh, number of stages in cascade. So the same nonlinearity uh, expressions I can write here. So I will write y1 of t, the output of first stage. So all the gain expressions of the first stage I will write in terms of alpha. The gain expressions of second term I will write in terms of beta. Gain in the sense uh, all the DC term, uh, all the um, scaling uh, terms will be expressed in terms of alpha and beta for the first stage and second stage. So how can I write alpha one, uh, y1 of t? Uh, alpha 1 into x of t 
plus alpha 2 x square t plus alpha 3 x cube t. Now to write y2 of t. Ah, so there definitely there is a dc term, beta naught and alpha naught is there, I am just neglecting that. Beta 1 into uh, y1 of t, uh, beta 2 into y2 of t, uh, sorry, y1 square of t and beta 3 into y1 cube of t. Now, what is this y1? y1 is this, right. So, you can substitute that. So, your y2 of t is equal to beta 1 into alpha 1 x of t plus alpha 2 x square t plus alpha 2 x plus you can write simply again the y1 of t square term plus beta 3 into y1 of t cubic term. Now my interest is to evaluate IAP. So how to evaluate IAP3? How did we evaluate IAP3 for a single stage? Uh, we considered the fundamental term and IM3 term, right? So similarly, uh, if I consider only the first order and third order terms coming at the output y2 of t, I can directly write the im3, I can write an estimate of ip3, I, I, right. So, can you write the first order and third order terms? So, you have, uh, you ha are you getting, to get ip3, you have to consider first order and third order terms. So, what is the first order term in this first expression? Beta 1 alpha 1 x of t, any other first order term? No. Any any third order term? Yeah, beta 1 alpha cube x cube of t. Similarly, from the second term also you will get first order and third order terms. From third also you will get first order and third order terms. Can you write only those terms? Maybe you can check alpha 1 beta 1 x of t plus, uh, will you get any other first order terms? No, there, will be, there is only one first order term. So you will get uh, third order terms, one is alpha 3 beta 1, mm, you can try that. So you will get actually another third order term from the second expression, it will be uh, 2 beta 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 into uh, x cube of t that will be the product of x of t and x square of t uh, plus one more term you will get which is alpha 1 cube into beta 3 right so if you have first order and third order terms, you can directly define your AIP3. So how will I define AIP3? So for a single stage, AIP3 is under root of 4 by 3, alpha 1 by alpha 3. So similarly, how can I write this for a cascaded stage? You can write AIP3 as, same thing under root of 4 by 3. In place of alpha 1, what you have now? Yeah, in place of alpha 1, I have alpha 1 beta 1. And in terms of alpha 3, I have, yeah, this term. So it is uh, 4 by 3 into alpha 1 beta 1 divided by alpha 3 beta 1 plus 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 2 plus alpha 1 2 beta 1. Huh? 
So 4 by 3 is very near basic term, right? Yeah, so correct. Yeah. 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 So your uh, expression will be uh, this. Now, if I square and invert this expression, so that may lead to uh, 1 by AIP3 square. You can do that, you can uh, square it and invert it. 1 by be 3 by 4 into alpha 3 beta 1 plus 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 2 plus alpha 1 2 into beta 3 divided by alpha 1 beta 1. Again, uh, here I will put an approximate because I have the entire thing uh, inside modulus. So, I cannot split it or it is not equal to we cannot split the denominator exactly right when it is inside modulus, but that is why I am writing approximate. So I will write this as 3 by 4 alpha 3 by alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 beta 2 by beta 1 plus alpha 1 square beta 3 by beta 1. Now, what is this first term if I consider 3 by 4 also? What is this 3 by 4 alpha 3 by alpha 1? So, can I write this as 1 by AIT 3 square is approximately equal to 1 by AIT 3 1 square plus this is alpha 2. Three by two, right? Yeah, this three by two into alpha two beta two by beta one plus alpha one square uh, a i p three. So now. Uh, this I have just uh, written the expression. We will see the spectra of this. So what will happen? Uh, so you have two stages here. Whenever a signal is uh, available here, as a part of this nonlinearity, you will get many products at here. Again, you will get some other products at this. So we will see the IN3 spectra of this cascade. That we will see. Uh, so if I look at the spectra, we will understand that this term can be neglected if the system is narrow band. That we will understand through looking at the spectra only. So, just I am making that point over here. This term can be neglected if the considering system is a narrow band system. That means, this term will be available only if the system is wide band. So, with that approximation, I am writing the AIP3 expression as, of the total AIP3 expression as 1 by AIP3 1 square plus alpha 1 square by ai 3 2 square. Now, if I extend this expression, I will get that the next term will be alpha 1 square into beta 1 square divided by ai 3 3 square. Plus, if I write one more term, the same term will be multiplied by the fundamental gain of the third stage. So, this will be the approximated expression. So, how I arrive from here to here is by neglecting this term. So, I am stating that this term can be neglected if the considered system is a narrow band system. That we look at the spectrum and we will uh, eliminate this term. Okay. So, with this I am uh, just winding up this class. So, there will be one more lecture on the spectra of this uh, cascaded stages.